All right, I would say welcome to the conference. Um, yeah, my name is Christoph Hermann Santos. I am the manager of the European branch of the Ross Industrial Control Consortium, and I am really happy to welcome you all to this year's edition of the Ross Industrial Conference. So let's start into the conference with a very small and short introduction to Fraunhofer IPA, the organizer of this conference. So Fraunhofer IPA is a research institute located in Stuttgart, Germany. And um, we are um, working on applied sciences here in the area of manufacturing and automation. So we have different kind of sectors that we are into and looking into visions of the factory of the future, production of the future, life sciences, mobility, energy, and other things. And to do that, we have a different kind of labs. So we have labs for medical engineering, biotechnology, surface engineering, materials technology, manufacturing and process engineering, and also labs for network production, resource efficient production and intelligent automation and clean manufacturing. And why are we actually organizing the Ross Industrial Conference? So this is because we have been actually early adopters of ROS. We have been involved with ROS since uh, the early beginning, so since 2010. Um, we've helped prototyping the ROS Industrial Initiative, and we have been building robots with ROS as software for uh, years now. So for example, the Carobot uh, series or the Robot Work series, um, we've built that with, um, with ROS. And we have other technologies such as cloud navigation, PyTask, or ROS model, of which you will hear in the following days, two um, or presentations too, uh, that are also based on ROS and help you with uh, a lot of things. During that time, we've also been able to create a number of spin offs, such as Mojin Robotics, that is selling the Carobot technology, Dragonbot, uh, of which we will hear here later, that is selling easy robot programming for uh, industrial robots and Node Robotics that is actually making uh, navigation much easier in production environments. And um, therefore, we've actually also been organizing the Ross Industrial Care Conference now uh, for nine years, so since 2012. And we are really happy to, uh, to welcome you here to the ninth edition. Um, yeah, as has been said, so we would have really liked you to be here in Stuttgart again. But as last year, uh, kind of regular, uh, regulatory issues and other things have probably prohibited us to, um, well, do this in physical uh, place, as well as use a company new conference platform, which is why we are now meeting on Teams. But anyways, so let's hope this is going to be a, a great conference with all the great speakers. And let's hope that we can um, yeah, meet in person again next year. So um, now let's start into the conference with a, with a number of reasons why to use ROS. And first, let's take a look at uh, a little bit at the robotics market that um, is currently present. So here are some, um, some information from um, the International Federation of Robotics. Um, so this was published, I think, in, in autumn this year, so you can see well, industrial robotic shipments have been stagnating for now more or less two years. Um, so since uh, to 2018, there hasn't been any major growth due to different reasons. On the one side, Corona, and on the other side, some problems in the automotive sector. Um, but generally speaking, we can also see that automotive applications uh, are the main driver. So let's say big manufacturers are the main driver. You see handling and welding are let's say the big applications for industrial robots, whereas um, let's say more diverse technologies only make up a, a small chunk of the industrial robot shipments. And we are also seeing that, um, well, professional service robotics uh, robots are used more and more. So specifically for manufacturing, it's interesting to see that the logistics sector is picking up quite, uh, quite a lot. And we're seeing more and more um, 
yeah, robots deployed there and also the market growing in the last years. So essentially to accommodate these uh, new uh, applications, we have to think about a little bit what is actually the end user stream. So we see, OK, robots, we, we know industrial robots. There are now more and more uh, logistics or intra logistics robots. We have care robots. <laughs> we have agricultural robots. We have human robot calibration and many more new applications. And what do actually the end users want? Uh, essentially, they want low cost robots. They want uh, not to program robot or robots too much. They want to have them plug and play so that they work instantly. They might even want to not pay the whole robot in the beginning, but pay as they go. They want the robots reconfigurable and self-optimizing. And what do we as robot developers actually need to make that a reality? So essentially, in my mind, this means that we need much more complex robot software than we actually have today in typical industrial robots. And the other problem that we are seeing there is that we don't have that big um, yeah, software players in the robotics market, which means, OK, how can we actually um, create such software? Comes to mind, maybe do a joint effort. So join together to build um, complex robot software that accommodates end users' dreams. Um, so maybe build a joint software infrastructure. And what should this kind of an infrastructure look like? So it should provide some standardized interfaces. The developer would like to use probably uh, their own programming language, their own development environment, use any libraries available, components, uh, and yeah, use uh, the information stored in the community uh, around this infrastructure to integrate their components as well as have friendly licenses on all parts of this infrastructure. And this is where ROS comes in, uh, or ROS can be a solution. So ROS provides actually a framework for developing uh, robot software, the necessary tools to, uh, to use the framework, functions for your robots, as well as a big ecosystem with uh, a lot more functionalities provided by third parties. And all this is under, uh, under a permissive open source license. So if you have ROS1 or uh, then it would be a BSD license, or if you have ROS2, it would be an Apache 2.0 license most often. And um, essentially, this way, in this way, ROS enables engineers to create an open, or open source ecosystem around robot software uh, consisting of new algorithms, tools, and software packages, hardware support for robots and sensors, and new robot applications. And this is actually built around or uh, built by totally different stakeholders. So this goes from hobbyists and schools to over research organizations, universities to software developers, hardware suppliers, system integrators, and end users. So we have a very, very wide ecosystem. And does this um, have an impact? Does this actually work? Um, so convince yourself. So this all started in 2007 with the first commit of uh, Willow Garage to the um, robot operating system source code. Uh, over the first open source ROS release in 2009 to uh, us, uh, well, initiating the ROS industrial idea with partners in 2012 to the first release of ROS2 that is much more uh, industry friendly ends to 2021, where we have, according to a paper, uh, more than uh, 200,000 ROS packages on GitHub and more than 80,000 developers that have used ROS on GitHub alone. So this means the number should be a lot higher because not everyone is actually publishing their code on GitHub. And there are a ton of new robots actually using ROS. So for example, delivery robots, drones, four-legged robots, underwater robots, warehouse robots, and much more. And now the other question that needs probably to be answered is ROS sustainable? So is it there to, to stay? So on the one side, we can say, okay, ROS has now survived more than 10 years. <laughs> so it's probably there to stay a little bit longer than, than now. And on the other side, we can also look a little bit into the infrastructure around ROS or the, uh, the government governance system. 
So essentially with ROS2, the technical steering committee, what it was introduced, which today consists of 20 members, and most of them are actually companies from IT, robotics, or automation. And the TSC is actually leading the development of the ROS2 core stack. Um, and there have been a number of working groups uh, created to also communicate between the ROS community and uh, the technical steering committee. So these are working groups around technical topics. And as previously shown, uh, you, you know that there's a quite large developer community, community behind ROS. And so we can also uh, safely say that ROS um, gets a lot of contribution from the ROS community and especially also the ROS ecosystem. So not only the ROS2 core stack. Now the question is, um, well, we, we have seen ROS is sustainable. ROS uh, has a lot of people that use it. Uh, and it can be used in all kinds of different situations, but how can you actually use it in your company? So the first thing that you could do with ROS is essentially using it for uh, testing your robots that you already have. So ROS is pretty modular and you can easily set up such test environments. The other option is if you say, okay, I want to develop a new robot or I have a new idea and I want to rapidly check whether this works, then you can use ROS for rapid prototyping. And if you're a component supplier, you can actually use ROS as product interface. So you want to have ROS developers using your components, then you should actually provide a ROS interface so that they can easily integrate it into their software. And finally, if you're developing robots and you choose to um, use ROS, you can also do that for your product development. So use ROS in your product directly or software directly. Another question that I often get asked is actually, uh, can ROS replace traditional robot programming? So if we think about how traditional robot programming of industrial robots works, well, the first thing that you would probably do is write some logic, then teach uh, the necessary positions to the robot, test the program, and then check whether it works, uh, go a, a, another number of loops. And this is kind of the way things are being done today in industry. So this is usually pretty deployment specific, so you have to redo that for every robot deployment that you have. Today we are seeing a shift towards another robot programming paradigm. So we are looking or seeing the rise of robot software platforms. So UR Plus comes to mind, Xyto, IQCA, and other things. So these are platforms that in the end will provide pre-made software for robots that you in the end only need to configure, which means you have a much smaller deployment specific part for your robot software in the end. And the end user in the end really only needs to configure uh, such a pre-made software for their uh, final deployment. So what we need to keep in mind is that most probably future robots will not be programmed specifically for each deployment. And essentially, we have been prototyping um, actually the use of ROS in such platforms. One very convenient thing is, for example, that UR provides today a very sophisticated ROS driver that enables you to integrate ROS into UR caps. And we have been trying that actually with our software here at Fraunhofer for IPA. So we have been developing easy welding, um, uh, easy robot welding software, for example. So you can see here as our technician teaches the robot um, to find some weld paths, it automatically finds the weld paths. And um, yeah, all this is built on top of ROS and move it and has been integrated into um, UR caps. And this was done uh, in a, with a very small effort in the end. And you can see, so this is quite a, an intelligent software. So you don't need to teach the paths themselves and also the software or the robot in the end will, um, will find out when the workpiece has been moved, for example. So these are examples of well, new robot software that we are going to, to, to see in the future that enables the end user to only configure the robot uh, or the pre-made software to, to do its tasks and no programming needed in the end. And this is only one example. There are a lot of other new use cases around ROS and we are going to hear about them today from, for example, Dragonbot, Node Robotics, 
Pigment Robotics, Canonical, IRT Gilbert, Southwest Research Institute, and Alias Robotics. And also tomorrow, there are a number of very, very interesting presentations around um, yeah, new applications with GLOSS. Now, with that being said, I want to come uh, to some announcements around the Ross Industrial Consortium and the Ross Industrial Initiative here in Europe. So, on the one side, I want to say uh, welcome to all the new members that we've had in 2021. So, essentially, uh, we had a very, uh, let's say, successful year. There has been a lot of companies joining this year. Um, so seven, uh, which means around about a 20% increase on the European side of members, um, which is quite substantial. So we are pretty happy about that. Um, again, welcome to all these new members. Um, another announcement I wanted to make is due to, well, the recent Corona crisis, we have been now, um, uh, or we are on the way of prototyping a new uh, training concept around the Ross industrial training that we are providing in Europe. Uh, we are there joining forces with the construct and are happy to provide to you a new training um, experience starting next year. Um, we are going to publish the first uh, dates for the basic training as soon as possible. But what we can already say is that we are going to um, start organizing advanced workshops again in 2022, and we are going to do that physically here at Fraunhofer IPA. So on the one side, we are planning or we are going to have a workshop um, for decision makers uh, in May next year, which is going to focus on, um, yeah, on making decision makers aware of uh, what ROS can be used uh, for, how their uh, organizations and developments can profit off it, and what are actually the limits, so to enable decision makers to take good decisions around ROS. The other um, workshop that we are going to organize next year is going to be ROS2 Advanced Manipulation, where we are going to build in one day a uh, manipulation application based on ROS2 using Move It and the Universal Robot Driver. This is also going to be hands on and here in the lab. Um, so we are very happy to to have you here. So if you if you would like to check this out and uh, join such a workshop, um, just contact me. Uh, these dates are going to be published in the beginning of next year. Another thing that I wanted to make the audience aware of is that we have a very very active research and development infrastructure within Ross Industrial Europe. So. Um, as you can see, we have uh, really a number of research and development organizations in the consortium all over Europe that can provide support to companies um, if they choose to use ROS. So if you are interested in getting support from, uh, from one of the, our members here, um, no problem at all. Contact me or contact them directly. They are really happy to help you with your problems. And with that being said, um, again, welcome to the conference. 